What a surprise for me. An Avon rod in my hand, an Avon float, a bucket of bread, a water I've never even seen before, and a river so full of fish I could nearly walk on them. Well people, I'm down here, looks like Borneo, <laughs> the Amazon jungle, Papua New Guinea even. No, it's Taunton down here, Somerset. Two and a quarter hours to get down here. Feels like two hours of that is trying to get through the traffic at Taunton. I'll come down and have a go at a river which I've heard a lot about. Never fish, never seen. I'm just giving it a go. I'm going to go travelling, roving, a bucket of bread, a float rod, like I used to old school, probably a blank. I don't know, let's get down and give it a go. They tell me you can see the chub in this place. I'll be very interested because I come from Hampshire. I know what clear water is. Let's check it out. Well, this stretch is uh, called the far stretch. And where they say it's, uh, oh yeah, it's gin clear, you can see the fish in there. It ain't Hampshire. It's going through a nice place, but it's not gin clear, sort of just off chocolate colour, I guess that's the way it is. And the guy in the tackle shop said, go upstream of the weirs. <clears throat> he said, you get small fish below the weirs, bigger fish above the weirs. Oh, it's obviously a nice, a nice uh, small one. Let's not fall down a break. We're not going to go ras fishing today, Graham. Careful. So there's a small weir there. He said it's about a mile. So who knows, who knows what the day will bring people. Blazing sunny day. Nice to hear the sound of the rushing water, I have to say. Very shallow, very, very fast. They do actually call it the fast stretch. I wonder if this is some uh, sort of relief river. I don't know, it's very, very damp under this bank. I think it goes up and down like a yo-yo, so the first thing we're going to do is... Um, it's all staged all the way up, looking for stand dead still, you can see it's staged in weirs. So I suppose this way to do it is what I'm doing is roving. I've got a clue which swims fish and which ones don't. I think I'm going to sop a bit of bread up, I've forgotten my catapult. I've locked myself out of the car park. Dropped the unhooking mat, oh dear, what a, st what a start generally means it's not going to be great. I think I'm going to get some bread mixed up here. Purely because I get out there, it's frying, they're giving 30 degree temperatures today. As you can see, no shortage of bread. I don't need it all in the bag at the same time. God, I've even got a hand white rag. Got some pellets. I think it's too fast for a floating crust here, I may be well. I'm going to keep a bit of floating crust, put a bit of bread slopped up in there. Right, let's get it mushed up. You can see that's all I've got, three loaves, about 45p a loaf. And a good chance of sliding in. Now what I do is get plenty of water in with the bread, get it all soaked up, it's cheap, cheap bread. So you want it to sink, I'll mush it just a bit, not too much, that's enough. Just put a kink in the bucket, squeeze the bread back like this, look. So squeezing the bulk of the water out of it, and then I'll just drain it off. And then 
I'll give it a good old mulch up like this because I want it to take a bit longer for the crust. I'm only looking for two or three fish just to make it worthwhile. When you go to a new water you're always at a huge disadvantage. And you can see that that half a loaf sort of goes to almost nothing. Right. He says the whirlpool's a small fish so I'm going to aim for chub along that side there. That's really my take on it. Who knows? Very shallow by the look of it. And still a pleasant day. Lovely looking weir. Obviously your food here is getting swept down big time fast. The old duck. Now the main current comes through here. If I throw the ground back over there, over there in that slack, more power where the duck is, I can actually see that it swirls and it's sinking before it gets whisked away. So let's try. A little bit over there. I think the margins are far side. It's going to be the spot. Will we get chub up under those rushes? Right. Fairly sure I'm going to get plastered in bread paste today. It's going to be noisy guys, the railway line runs across there. I'll try a big piece of flake, I just go round once, twist it and just pinch on the eye of the hook. Got five pounds straight through, I've got my trusty old 30 year old Avon float and 3BB, one about six inches from the hook and we'll see how long it takes me before I get snagged up. Wow, it's shallow. I'm just running it down this inside. Uh, fast stretch first. Nope. Could possibly have done with a match rod. I've come with the Avon rod. And I'm going to probably have trouble ho holding it over there on that far, far edge. That's about where I, I would figure I would be if I was a chub somewhere along that line there. Now that float's holding up lovely there, but of course it could be just on the bottom. And when it's going down at a speed that they can actually see it and take it, but not so slow, that they've got too much time to uh, take it. I think I'm going to have to go shallower. I've got a feeling that's dragging on the bottom. Now the current's going to get it. Really good pace going down through here, I must admit. And I seem to be able to hold it over that far edge. Sure, it's a bite. I'm going to go a little bit shallower here. Give it a go. The man in the tackle shop said, if you fish in the weir pool section, you get small fish. Well, I just want to catch. Oh! <laughs> the man in the tackle shop might be right. <laughs> the man in the tackle shop might actually know what he's talking about. Oh, nice little chub. Look, 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 look. It's just a swinger. There we go. And he has mullered it. Chub number one. Away you go. Well, he was bang on. The bigger chub back up against that, and he said the smaller chub are here, but I was right about the pace. Oh, I'm well pleased to get a chub that fast. Well, well, well. I'm keen now. Ridiculous, isn't it? Really ridiculous, my age. But there's what keeps keeps me going. I'm go right. I can't get it in fast enough now. Going down, going down, right down there. I'm holding my rod back this way a bit, trying to keep a bit of angle on it. 
Sometimes you'll hit a piece of weed and it'll just drag the float under. I'm looking for a sharper bite. Oh, yes. Oh my god. OMG. This one, this one is this. What is this new undiscovered river that everybody else knows about and I didn't? Oh, it's not a bad chunk. That's a netter. That is a netter, boys. Holy cow. A loaf of bread is it. Oh. That's about a pound and a half, guys. That is about, that's a pound and a half of anybody's money. One pound six if you're dubious and doubtful. Brilliant. Wow. Am I detecting? I might actually have a reasonable day. The answer to that is, looks like, yes. Now, the other thing I do, I, put always, I make a point of doing this, put my bait miles away from where I'm going to stand. So, that fish was not that small. So I'm going to chuck a bit more on that far slack area. See it going up? If I keep dead still, it's going up in an eddy and then coming down. Here we go. Hopefully we don't get a big upstream win. Come on, come on, come on. Floats nice. That's about where I had the tape before. And apparently they go quite big in here to four pounds anyway. They say they all say it's somewhere between two and four pounds. I'm way down there now. Probably a little bit pacey there. It's the 654 to Waterloo. There we go again, big gob of bread. Not quite, Graham. The wind's blowing it round the back. Do you ever get this, guys? It goes round the back of the spool. The bread falls off. It feels like I've missed a rod, rod ring there. I'm going to check that. It feels a little bit draggy. If you get that, oh, there you go. Something's not right. See what I've done? It's twisted around and I feel I might have missed an eye here no that's okay it was that twist I just made it drag a little bit right don't do what I do putting your bread in the sun like this guys hot day let's try again I hopefully it won't that's better that's better Give them a little smidgen over there to get them going. You should be able, to, if I keep my head dead still, just be able to see that white of the ground bait going down slowly. It's almost going upstream a bit before it goes down, if that makes sense. It's holding up there nicely, I guess I'm just bumping on the bottom. Let's just dump this here. And looks like there's a nice boulder that I can walk onto. Now I can't see any chub. See the fast speed down through there. Where they have these backed up sort of weirs, it has in fact, if you look at the bubbles, made that flow slow up a little bit. And you said they the chub come down and they sit up, stay, up upstream of this of this weir. So I guess I've got about another 25 yards off the edge of those rushes are quite fancy. In fact, I've just seen a fish rise, dace or roach, I'm up further up. I'm going to go midway up between the weirs, guys. Lovely setting. Might be noisy with the railway line, but you can't have everything, can you? Easy access. So, much easier to run the float down here, just straight down the middle. See if anybody's at home here. Going with a Yes, I'm on. My God, I'm on. I was just about to tell you. Wowee, what a bloody place. 
He did tell me there's a lot of chub in here. Small one, small chub. Just about liftable. Here we go, it's obviously a bit of weed in it. Even a fish this side folks, and no trouble. Oh, fuck off. He's gone in. So much easier to run the float down here, just straight down the middle. See if anybody's at home here. Going with a Yes, I'm on. My god, I'm on. I was just about to tell you. Wowie, what a bloody place. He did tell me there's a lot of chub in there. Small one, small chub. Just about liftable. Right, I've got that chub back. What I was going to say is, even here you can see the line of bubbles, which is the main pace of current. So I'm trying to sort of gauge it to go down there and hoping I'm about the right depth. Oh, I missed a fish then. I don't want to go deeper and continually be dragging on the on the riverbed. Now, oh, here we go, people. I wonder if I need the old animal come back for that one. That tells me I'm running through a little bit too deep. So I'm going to shallow up. And to make that float stand up a bit, I'm going to take one of a shot off. Yeah, it makes the float stand up just a little bit more and I can see it farther down in the bubbles then. Let's try that. And out we go. A little bit behind the feed. That was about the depth that I had those other fish out, so. Quite tricky watching the float through the bubbles. You almost need to draw it into a sort of cleaner, clean patch. Come on, another small one. It could have just been made that difference. A, because I've seen the bite better because I took a shot off the float. Or it could be just that bringing the depth back up so it's going through more at the pace of the current. It's done been a bad fish. Oh yes, oh yes, that's better. That's a better fish. I'll tell you what, they scrap. They must be pretty fit in here because you think they're, they're fighting this current all the time. Let's put that down there ready. They're fighting this current all the time, so they've got to be pretty fit, haven't they? They've got to be pretty fit. Here he comes. He's here. Now that's a, yeah, that's, that's a nice one, look, guys. That's the float I'm using. There's the chub. That's a nice chub. That is a good one. Yeah. Not a monster. Two and a quarter maybe. But still pretty good fish. Well pleased. Number four. Well I think I continue to work that far side of the bubbles across there. Rather than closer in. As I say. I don't live it, I don't know the swims, just gotta work it out as I go. Okay, I'm on six chub already guys. <clears throat> now, you did say just to keep moving, roving, get two or three fish, you know, from each swim and then move on. It has gone a little bit quiet. When I say quiet, I've had like five trots down there, nothing. So I'm gonna move up to the next weir, but I will try the weir pool just in case there's anything there. So move on. So, moved up from way down there. Small stone weir. I know he says small fish here, but let's try it. It's a little bit better pace here along the middle. There's a channel of water over there pushing through. Channel of water on the other side pushing through. It leaves me a slack in the middle. If I was a chub, I would possibly be, be in that middle run or over on that far run. And it's quite a wide area here. We're sort of cut out a little bit. So let's give it a go. Need to let them know we're here. As you see, I'm trying to throw it into the slack areas so that 
it sort of swirls around and gets time to sink before I run my throat float through there. I don't want it just whisked away. You've got to attract their attention. Sort of wonder what else is in it, you know, with all those chubby things to be pike, wouldn't you? I think there'd be some fair old pike in there. Piece of bread. I'm guessing same depth very often the first bit below a weir can be uh, a variation of depth deep and shallow Just make sure you don't pinch that bread on too fast I'm going to try inside I feel like it should be deeper my float but I'm going to try it over there first just in that no not quite far enough over I think we're going to get sucked in by the fast water I did and nearly lost the lot. That was close. Try again. That's better. And we'll sort of let it trickle down and sort of you've got to sort of gauge. I can actually see my bread underwater there. Try and gauge where it's going to hold up. And it's, see how it's held there, the float? You probably guys, you won't be able to see it, but it's, it's just held in that sort of back eddy between two bits. And if I was a chub, that's the sort of area I'd be. Why fight the fast current when you can lay on the edge of it? it oh, do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean, people? Do you see what I mean? Why fight the fast current <clears throat> when you can sit in that and just swing to the fast current, grab a piece of food, and go back? And that is not a bad fish. They do scrap well in there, I will say, for their size. Come in, number seven. Well, you see there's only small fish in the weirs. This appears not to be a small fish. Don't fall down, Graham, don't fall down. Here he comes, here he comes, he's gone in the rushes. Too late. He is throwing it all over my glass and my lens, but they're very fit fish in here, I will say that. There you go, another nice, another nice looking chub in good condition. Hook falls out. <laughs> Wet again, Graham. Look at the state of my trousers. I think I've had a nasty accident. I will never forget a big one. Right, I'm on nine chub people, nine. So I've moved up again as soon as I have like six or eight trots through and nothing, <clears throat> I'm gonna start moving. Let's just see what we got. And there's another tip, look, you can see there's a worn area, so I'm guessing if he says fish up from the uh, weir, that other people are fishing, that's why there's a hole in the rushes there. A little fish took, could even take. I wonder if they take floating, Christ, if he's fed, fed enough of it. Running through, running through. I might have had a bump then. I did have a bump then. Here comes number 10. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Digging and digging is a nice fish again. Look at trying to get in the rushes here. Got him out. Wow. Would this fishery get hammered up my end of the woods? I would imagine so. There we go, look. Another nice chub. Look, beautiful fish, isn't it? Beautiful condition. Ten. So glad I took the trouble to come. And I was out in the boat yesterday catching conger eels. Day before that, I was out catching five pound trout, some on a dry fly. What a, there's anglers and danglers. I just figured with this heat wave, the rivers might be the last to uh, actually heat up and shut down. So what I was saying before I got interrupted by that chub is, there's a big bank of beautiful rushes and flowers all along here. So they could be anywhere the fish, but he did say fish upstream of the weirs for the better fish. And you can see there's a wear mark here where presumably they might have matches, I don't know, but certainly you can net the fish through there. So I've stopped here, I've already had that one chub. So I'm gonna give it a, another go here and then uh, just keep working my way up to the next weir. 
something you want to do you've seen how I just pinch the flake around the bend of the hook all I do is I just get on the tip of my fingers a little slop of bread I throw it out you want to if you can cast just in front of that like this so that when you hold the float back it all goes down pretty well with that loose feed that you've thrown in that applies to maggots not just sopped up bread like I'm using oh god what a, what? there's anglers and there's danglers people that's a tip and a half that you saw work absolutely straight off the bat in comes hopefully chub number 11 wow what a session if I can get him out of the weeds here he is you can see how that one worked so that when you hold your float back you know to keep in uh, contact with everything look at that chub it's full of chub this river right first cast in a new swim again I'm going just because that's not far enough I'm an expert now Ooh. even that's not far enough but we'll try it I'll put both shot down nearer the hook to take that big piece of flake down we're just running it right down there right down using the bubbles as my sort of marker as to where the uh, bulk of the flow is going down the middle of the river seems slacker over on that there he is oh what this place is just chub city I'm going to call it this place is chub central this is number 16 unbelievable I don't think I've had chub fishing this fast to be honest of course I've had bigger chub but these are real good size they're all going up to about two and a half shading three pounds put them on the map wow hook falls out and there you go it looks like a mark previously from a heron maybe I'm amazed the otters haven't moved in here. Right, see if we can try that again. Straight out. That's it, the shot is taking the bread plate down faster. Because you run the risk of the fish seeing the shot and being wary. And slightly pacey water oh, there, I've missed that one. I've missed that one, I had the bay line open. Didn't miss that one. Didn't miss that one, so there's more than one fish in there. Goodness me, 17. Wowee. That's some chub fishing, I've got to tell you, folks. Blazing hot, 30 degree temperature. That's 17 chub I've had. It's just like, seemed like I'd missed that one when I left the bay line open. And it did appear that the slightly pacier current, there must have been more than one chub there. I struck and missed. That's going through pretty quickly, so they've got not much uh, choice. Either take it, miss it, or their pal gets it. About there, missed it. No, I missed that one. And of course, this way, I'm getting nothing except big fish. I'm not getting dace roach, gudgeon, minnows. I'm going to get minnowed out if I was using maggots. If I was using maggots, I would be absolutely striking all the time at tiny little bites of small fish. And I'm not, I'm hitting decent sized fish all the time. This is probably the smallest I've had. But still, bigger. Ooh, Graham, don't swing it. Bigger, bigger somewhat than a minnow. I'm gonna leave this running so you know I'm not making this up. Let's see if I can't get another one. I've got the group of uni people on the other bank, but they're not bothering me. I'm not bothering them. I'm going to try that fast bit of there, just at the back of a bit of weed that's floating down. Any time from then onwards, there's a taking area. About there. Three, two, one. None. Sorry, I was, I was one and a half seconds out there, so I apologise. Do apologise. Maybe they're dropping back. 
So it's way down there now. It's halfway to Bridgewater. Oh, I missed the fish too. Well, I mean, for people living in a built-up area, like it is down here, it's like a mini city. Look at this lovely river. Look at all the flowers and wildlife. Mind you, I haven't seen many ducks, and so that's good. Now, it's changed here. I'm walking upstream. A lot more streamer weed. I'm asking myself why. And you see all this beautiful yellow, whatever. It looks like leftover oilseed rape to me. There's a little weir up here. They've got some electrical power lines there back then. It says no fishing, but I guess I'm clear of that now. Right, I can see where I want to fish immediately. Isn't it strange? All the years of fishing Hampshire Raven as Dorset Star. Just exactly what I want to fish. Definitely the back of this weed bed. Shouldn't think anybody's fished here. That's got fish written all over it, boys. Sorry. Sorry, but it has. Back of that weed bed down there. Slop ready. We call this slop or in the winter. Fishing a Dorset star, we call it stodge. Like this, stodge. You saw me mash it up, it's just pulped up loaf of bread. Not even a loaf of bread, half a bread. And I chuck this into the weed so it breaks out and tumbles it down. Well, if there's that many chub in this river, I'm putting a bite here first cast. So stupid. Don't say that, Graham. It's so stupid. Put the pressure on. Another thing is, I think they're going to come up on top. If I kept feeding, like this, just bits of leftover crust. I did see one chub come out. I did see one chub come up and take a fly. So I'm thinking these might even come up on the surface. Who knows? Tangle time again. What would a fisherman's life be if he didn't have the odd tangles to amuse himself? This has definitely got to be a chub in here. If I'm catching chub down there, 100% there must be a chub in this swim. Here we go. From there downwards, any time now on, that bread will have sunk about there, I reckon. Now, perhaps I've misread the swim. It happens. Much of, look, they could be here or they could be down there. Might take them a little bit of a while to to find the. No. <laughs> no, Graham, no. No. You were right. Right in there. Ooh, ooh, can net the fish here. In fact, I should have cast them down there. In fact, let's take some gear down with me. Hopefully, it's fairly safe here. Fairly safe, I don't know. No, oh, it looks like a, a dangerous spot. No, nope, we're okay. Um, one of these things is very handy. I've noticed one of these. A net. Stupid child, man. Stupid, stupid child. Christ, I think he went. Here he comes. Here he comes. Well, they're scrapping this in this fast current up here. Yeah, get him. He's in. There we go. Hooks out. Two, two and a quarter pounds, I suppose. Lovely. Sliding back. Mark there, mark there, bang. What is it in here that's eating two and a half pound chub? Or trying to? Number 20, by the way. Guys, I'm throwing crust in. I've come way up towards the road bridge. I thought I'm going to try drifting some crust down. <laughs> it's I can't. <laughs> Watch over there. Watch. There he is, there's, there's, there's chuff coming up, taking crust off the surface. So I don't even need a float. Oh my God. 
You could come here fly fishing. Look, the other swell. You could come here fly fishing. I was just about to mix some slop up. I thought I'm going to peel off the, the edge of the crust like this. Just purely out of interest to see if anything would come up. And they're, they're swirling around it there. Look. That is, how many chub are in this place? The match weights must be phenomenal. I'm just going to let that sit. Yeah, yeah. I can see the fish under the water with polarizing glasses. There goes across down here. Well, another small one, small one. I saw one about three pounds. More down there. Look, 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 just taking it off the top. Well, I think there's only one thing to do. Do I need slopped up bread? It appears not. I'm going to go through without putting any bait in whatsoever, other than that floating crust. They're always going to be more confident lower down in the water column. And there was one there that looked about three pounds. I'm going to give them a big old chunk. Here we go. Wish me luck, might be a tad too deep. But from the number of chub I saw coming through, this ain't gonna last long. I think I missed a bite then. So no ground bait at all, other than that floating crust. I wanna be at the back of that weed, really. This is a strange place, I seem to be everywhere. I'm gonna bring it in slowly. Try again over the back a bit there. Let's try down there, see what happens. Trying to keep it still. Didn't bring, bring in the, uh, the big camera so I could zoom in on the float. You just have to trust me. Missed him. That was a dippy little bite. I tend to think that bigger chub came back up here. I, I imagine they go back to the area they came from. Maybe they do need that little bit of ground bait slop going in just to get them going a bit. I'm either tripping the bottom or I'm just getting little bumping bites. Previously the float is absolutely boom, just buried. In fact, if anything I would say they hold the float under a long time. That's where I would expect to chub just the back of that piece of weed. Tricky trying to mend the line there. Right, should be somewhere there and thereabouts. After this, if I don't get a bite on this one, I'm going to put some uh, slop in there just to get them going. There we go. Didn't need it, boys. Didn't need it. I didn't think we did. 21. And counting. Is that guy, he's got my ground bait delivery. Yeah, yeah, just stop there, tip it straight in the river here for the chub. That's what it is, he's got my ground bait delivery. He's in. Well, you might ask yourself why I've actually chosen this lovely little weir pool. Beautiful. By the way, I'm on, I just can't even, 27 chub. The reason I've come up here is because of this. This dark area is called shade because it's at least 30, 31 now. I'm frying, I think the fish are going a little bit. I'm gonna set myself a target. 50 chub, that would be over 100 pounds of chub in my estimation. So, I'm on 27, I'm gonna have a drink, a sandwich, and then I'm gonna be baiting up over there and running the float through. It's a nice, clear, well oxygenated pool there. And listen, the city light is only up there. I can't believe how quiet it is here. I thought I'd be bombarded with, with people. You know what I'm saying? I thought I'd be loose feeding prams and shopping trolleys and stuff. It's really, really nice, really nice. It's just nice to be left alone for once and have a bit of peace and quiet. A lovely fast river, absolutely rammed to the gills with chub. Right, let's have something to drink. Uh. Got hardly any water, drunk most of it in the first half. God, I've only been going about three hours. It 
these are good guys if you put in really really cold water they will stay cold all day what have we got to eat mmm pellets nice loaf of bread or some of these things yeah I know I know I know it's not like eating fruit but got to eat something boys got to eat something Been a while coming. That, that is one of the chunkier ones, isn't it? Really nice chub. I lost an even bigger one over on the other side. So if you're putting these guys at like, I don't know, two and a half pound average, this one maybe it might go three, but nevertheless, fantastic fishing. I think you'd agree. I don't think, in all honesty, I've known chub fishing as prolific as this. Unbelievable. Let's get him back. Well, I've come way up uh, towards the town, the city, whatever you want to call it. Big uh, bypass bridge up here. Some really cool graffiti in there. I'm not really big into graffiti, but these people who do all this spray painting, they must be have a wasted talent because some of it's really quite good. It's just that they don't need to do it on public buildings and stuff. But it is, you know, it's good. I'm just going to have a go here. I'll tell you why. It's a lot narrower and it's... Um, pushing the current through faster so it means the fish have got less time to grab hold of the bait so I'm going for the slot big time because I won't be holding out in the heat much longer now it's 20 to 2 in the afternoon most sensible people are in their luxury swimming pools i.e. the sea uh, I'm, a, I'm a fisherman it's all I know chirp big chirp I don't think I'd fancy fishing down here in the evenings or at night or anything like that. Not with the cameras anyway. Right, let's have a run through and see if anybody's at home and my judgment of the pace of the river through narrowing does exactly uh, work out. It's definitely, definitely slowed. I'm calling the middle section, I don't even know where I am to be honest. Much faster pace going through there, the float. You'd think, you'd think there would be a chub at home there. So I might have to go a little bit deeper. If not, going back down the bottom end where I started and was indeed getting plenty of fish. Look, it could be there's less chub up here or, or not. I missed that one. It could be there's less chub up here or it could be, you know, just the fact that it's afternoon and it's tough fishing this time in the sunshine, as you would expect. Got quite big pieces of char uh, che cheese. That white stuff's bread gram. Got some quite big pieces of bread. I had a bite back there, so I've got to run through. Normally get three runs through the float and I get no bites. You know what it's like, folks. I get bored quick. So, oh, don't go on the weed. He's in the weed. Okay, that means the bread comes off. Watch this. Happy days. There we go. 
really good when you've got the fish feeding. Try again. I think I might follow my own advice. Throw a load of bread in. Follow up just in front of it. So by the time I hold the float back, that should have caught it all up. That's a theory, boys. Let's see if we get anything. Nice, even pace flow here. Oh, how did I miss that? Maybe they're small fish. I think the bread stayed on then. I'm going to keep running through. Pretty sure that... Now that's the bottom. Going down the middle, going down the middle. Just letting it run. I'm not holding it back, just letting it go through at the pace of the current. Missed another one. Got him this time. Got him this time. Just dragging along the bottom, that was. Just dragging along the bottom. Urban chub fishing. There's the uh, road bridge. And I'm hooked up there. Beautiful blue sky, is it not? Who would have thought the fishing would have been like this? That's another nice chub. In he comes. I did uh, go a little bit deeper and I'll try to hold it back a bit. So, oh dear, look, look, there's a guy trying to net some Pringles for God's sake, Graham. Shows the quality food I'm eating. I'll go fishing, I'll just go eat for survival. That's number 30, by the way. Well, I'm working my way back upstream. Well, not back upstream, I'm going upstream. My goodness, a bag with the litter that's actually in it. So here we go. Just leave my gear here for a second. What fisherman can't resist looking off a bridge? Probably says no looking off a bridge is banned. Banned by the council, bridge looking. Anybody who spots a chubs, two months in prison and a fine like the old bus penalty fine I got here. <laughs> to an angle, this is like a prison and that. I can't get of the water. All that lovely water and I can't get of it. It's a chubs one there, but I think there's somebody actually residing there. Cool. Sorry. Yeah, good pace of current there. Right. I'm going to walk up here, have a little fish, see what it is. And I'm going to call it quits. I'm going to finish off down the bottom end where I first started. That looks like a traditional chub swim there. Here's the rest of the urbanisation. So there's two potential swims, I would say. This one and that one. Maybe I'm starting this one up here first. Any bread I throw in can get picked up by the fish there, if that makes sense. Nice bit of bend. It's narrowed down. Pace is picked up. Quite a bit of weed there. It's a new estate over there, I guess, relatively new. Yes, that tree looks... It's a very fishy tree. If there's such a thing. Starting here. Ah, I'll tell you what I'm going to like to do. I'd like to get one fish out of each of these two swims. So, get a bit of junk out. I spray it a little bit more. So if you notice, I spray it. It's not going to be too deep there, Graham. I think it's better to run the float through without disturbing the fish by doing it shallow first. All right, <clears throat> here we go. The shadow line over there looks very fishy to me. What do I know? Never been here before. Don't think I'm quite far enough over. Just waiting. Just running that float through there. That's going to go through the shadow line if I can. Yes, I think that's. That would be the. Oh, I knew there'd be a fish at home there. As soon as the float went into the shadow line, it buried. It's not a big fish, but listen, they all count. 
He's now weeded me. There we go. Mr. Chubb was at home under that tree. Okay, swim number two. A bit more weed here. Here comes the ambulance. Anywhere from there on. Oh, oh, I missed him. There was a fish at home, boys. There was a fish at home. I think a little bit of... A little bit of slop. Might just induce him. If we can get lucky. Sometimes you bump a fish off and it's just a small one. There we go. Don't fall in, Graham. Floats just set now. In the zone. Missed him, I think. Wow. As you can see here, with the flyover, urbanisation is definitely with us. Now some of these guys just throw paint pots at the wall and others have got some form of talent, although a sort of geometrically straight edge design to a lot of it. When you look at it, there's a rigid, sharp line some in there. They have a curve and then, is that a sign of anger or something like that? Psychologists might know. Nice colours, I like the colours. Another one over there, I don't even know, somebody other grinders, oh grinders, is it one of them famous, who's that famous guy? Bugsy, Bonksy, <laughs> Banksy, oh look there's G.I. Joe with his CS gas or whatever he's got there. Wow, it's just sort of wasted talent isn't it, it's also a waste of paint really. Guys I'm, uh, I'm sitting down now, <laughs> I'll be laying down soon, I'm still getting fish, if I can get this one out. I've got to sit down, I'm exhausted with this heat. This weight for this is number 33. And they're not. Get in. Look at this, look. I mean, guys, they're proper chub. They're not like half pound or six ounces, they are proper chub. Look at that, beautiful fish. Great big mouth on it. Lovely gold cheek, we're sliding back. I'm trying to get that slop going in again. Well, this is a, if this is a swim, snap that down, I'll see where I'm going. This is a swim, sit down fishing. I've got a chunking great big piece of bread flake on there now, just to see if they will take it. It's so big, it's nearly pulling the float under. And that's something else you have to take into consideration. If, uh, I had a bite on it. If you shot the float down and then put a big piece of flake, by the time that flake soaks up the moisture of the water out the river it will pull the float under so you can't see the bite so sometimes it pays you just to undershot it come on come on it's a lovely piece of bread you know you want it any time now no yes is that a fish that is indeed a fish, my, that's right at the tail end of the swim. Oh man, this is some session. This doesn't feel a bad one either, another two and a half pound I guess. Two and a quarter, two and a half. Here he comes. I don't think I've known fishing like it really for numbers of chub of this size. That's two and a half, easy. Oh yeah. Got him. Boom. Big piece of flake, big piece of flake. Head shaking tells me it's a, probably a smaller fish. But it'll do. Come on, in you go. You notice how I drip all the water? carefully over my feet. Well, it's a, 
It's getting tough. I'm on 37. I don't think I'm going to get to 50. I could if I stayed for the evening. Absolutely no. Probably get 60. I'm just getting really tired and really hot. I'm going to have a couple more drops further downstream. I'm going to see if I can crack 40 for you. So another three fish needed. It'd be nice to get one about three pounds, three and a half pounds, something like that. But see how we go. So, more walking. What a setting though. Clouds up there, look, they're starting to build a little bit. Wind's picking up over here. They've given big time thunderstorms coming through middle of the night. So I picked three good days to go fishing. I did trout fishing, sea fishing, and now I've done a mind blower of a chub session. Wow. If I get home okay, I've got two San Miguel beers that are absolutely waiting for me in the fridge. Right, let's go. Last fish on, guys. It's number 43. Nice chub. They're all nice, these chub. They're in good condition, they scrap hard, they bite freely, and they're in the net. That personally is the best place, I think, for a chub. So there you go, guys. Nice fish to finish off with. Number 43. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I've had a really good session of like, hey, it's about the most chub I've ever had on a float in my life of a decent size, not half pounders. So, well worth the two and a half hour drive down here, the frying, the cooking in the sun, and I think I saw one, two other anglers in maybe a mile. That's where I like it. Guys, hit the subscribe button, both channels, TA Fishing, TA Outdoors. We'll see you next time. I've got just one more piece of bread left.